<clears throat> All right, when I get sick of talking to myself, we've been picking up. I hate my glowing mole. We've been picking up. We picked up J Jerry's. I'm like, you know, I'm just forget it. I'm gonna begin. Here, eat it. <laughs> me a steamer today randomly and I'm go and I just was pulled this out it fell down it was underneath me and I'm like she knew that why did she give me a steamer randomly she steamed me she just knew everybody is on to everything you know I'm sick of it I don't know why they won't let me in on the joke they just want me to sit there and go oh my all day that's what it feels like Really does. Look how oily. Every time I read read this, I'm always uh, like my breakdown. I, I was so gross. Like I've been giving up. So I, but then I start laughing and I go like, I gotta record it. Here, even on this, I just flip to this right now. Go. Oh, don't smile. Because buying clothes. I just flipped around a page like I do in the Bible. Buying clothes is always tricky, but is <laughs> always tricky. But when there's loud music playing, it really throws your judgment. You look at stuff like, hey, if there was a cool party and I was a cool guy, this might be a cool shirt. And then you get home and there's no music, <laughs> there's no party, and you're not cool, and you're not a cool guy. The same chump, seventy-five bucks later. <laughs> lighter. Anyway, that's not true though, but it's funny. But you, I, you should wear it. It's cool. <laughs> I'm sure it's wonderful. So it goes. I love watching put watching women put on their perfume. They're very careful. They have their little strate strategio strat strategio strategio areas. Places they think that we're going, and they always hit the inside of the wrists. And p women are convinced that this is the most action-packed area that could ever happen. It's just—it's <laughs> just so you could sniff it. And when you're waving your hands around, that's why it goes in the air. See, I don't. I always—I spray my—I spray my neck. I spray my crotch. I spray my hair. Oh. <laughs> Those are the places I spray it, which is where I want. <laughs> and my chest. I spray everything, really. I guess you better hope it's a good perfume. <laughs> and that'd be a problem then. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> What is happening there? Is is that in case you slap the guy? <laughs> he still finds you intriguing. <laughs> Crack. He turns back. Oh, oh, Chanel. That was, I remember hearing you say it in the show. I was laughing at laughing at the first way this these two page <laughs> this made this part made me laugh hard he goes well that's it I give up I really don't know what women are thinking I've talked with them I've studied them I've asked them to study me and I have to admit I'm still at square one not that I really object to square one. That is the only numbered square in the game. At least you know your position. And nobody ever screws up. 
<clears throat> and goes well back to oval seven. I don't know what you're talking about. But uh, <laughs> I believe we're all secretly happy. We can't figure out our relationships. It keeps it keeps our minds working. I think we have to be grateful for the one thing in our lives that keeps us from being totally focused on eating. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny because I I like to eat a lot dating is pressure and tension what is a date really but a job interview that lasts all night and the only difference between a date and a job interview is that in not many job interviews is there a chance that you'll wind up naked at the end of it well, Bill, the boss thinks you're the man for the position. Why don't you strip down and meet some of the people you'll be working with? Maybe we need some kind of pre-date ritual. Maybe first meet up in one of those rooms where you visit prisoners. You have the glass between you and you talk on the phones. You see how that goes before you're, you attempt an actual date. This way, the only sexual tension would be deciding if you should put your hand on the glass or not. Sounds romantic. <laughs> And if you're not comfortable at any point, you just signal to the guard and they take the other person away. <laughs> it's hard to have fun when you're feeling evaluated. We should say, you seem nice, why don't we get together sometime for some serious scrutiny? Because that's the thing that happens whenever you think about this person in terms of maybe spending your future with them. You have, no, you have to magnify every little thing about them. The guy will be like, I don't think her eyebrows are, are even... <laughs> Or for, could I look at an uneven eyebrow for the rest of my life? <laughs> and of course, the woman's thinking, what is he looking at? Do I want someone looking at me like this for the rest of my life? <laughs> women, of course. <laughs> women, of course, have powers far beyond those of mortal men. A woman left a message on my phone machine the other day with a kind of a breathy voice and no oh wait, wait, i was thinking look you guys are confused when I, I should change my way of talking i'm sorry i meant to say this breathy <laughs> sometimes when i'm reading this i feel like i'm the man to be honest with you i totally don't believe this stuff i feel like the man i feel like all the men are the women Anyway, women, of, yes, women of course have powers far beyond those of mortal men. A woman left a me a woman left a message on my phone the machine the other day with a kind of breathy voice. And no matter what a woman says, if it's in that breathy voice, it sounds so appealing. A stewardess could lean over and whisper in my ear, "Would you put on your seatbelt? We're about to crash into a mountain." <sighs> And I would go, really? So what are you doing later by the ruptured f fuselage? What do you say we meet for some peanuts over the black box? <laughs> I'll bring the cushions. Women need to like the job of the guy they're dating. If they don't... <laughs> There's just certain parts that made me have to hit record. If they don't like the job, they don't like the guy. Men know... <laughs> Men know this, which is why we make up the phony bogus names for the jobs that we have. We'll, we'll write, <laughs> we'll write, well, right now I'm the regional management supervisor. I'm in development production consulting. I don't think that appeals to women, any of those things. <laughs> Maybe, and I don't care. <laughs> but men, men, on the other hand, men on the other hand, <laughs> Men, on the other hand, if <laughs> we are physically attracted to a woman, <laughs> are not that concerned with their with her job. Oh no! <laughs> Please, <laughs> I was saying, I, I if I'm the if I'm the man, then that's I'm in big trouble. If that because then that would be what you you would be interested in. 
I'm, <laughs> I'm not a supervisor. I'm not in development, production, consulting. I, if that were the case, I'd be in big trouble. Then I'm, <laughs> I was thinking of Vincent with it. <laughs> <laughs> Men, on the other hand, if they are physically attracted to a woman, are not that concerned with her job. We'll just go, really? A sla slaughterhouse? <laughs> Is that where you work? That sounds interesting. So what do you have? A big cleaver and you just lop their heads right off? That sounds great. Listen, why don't you shower up and we'll get some burgers and catch a movie? You know, there's a bunch of headless people everywhere. gored up people. Is that funny? And why why <laughs> and why is it always dinner? You pick your you pick your teeth. I agree. The word the first you don't want to eat in front of somebody. Maybe a lollipop or something. Right when you meet somebody. Oh that's a horrible story. Uh it's no big deal. <laughs> but I'm saying when you're going out with some, especially if someone you're nervous around you don't want to be sitting there eating in front of them like it's been the first date I don't know I remember one time I won we went in school I won a thing where I could go to lunch with my teacher and she was a young teacher she was like this 24 year old lady and she was like cool, but you know, she's like young enough that she feels, she's not like a cute little, I don't know, she almost feels like she's just cool and she's just almost intimidating a little bit, but like in a, and she took, but I, she thought she was cool and I liked her, but, and, but, and we went to Taco Bell and we ate, uh, and I got a Mexican pizza. I'll never forget. I just felt really nervous around her, like, who? I mean, not, I'm not trying to, I, but I felt really, <laughs> look, I feel like there's people are laughing at I felt really nervous. I, and I was eating my, trying to eat my pizza and not like, I uh, get it all over me. I was just, it just, and it was messy food. And like, and I remember I, and I like, it was falling and I, and I was cleaned up with a napkin and then I, <laughs> then I unwound the napkin and there was, and a bunch of pizza, like a bunch of the pieces flew like in her face and like hit her food. She was like, like, and I was so embarrassed. Like it was the worst moment, one of the worst moments of my life. I don't know. It's just a lot. It's when you're nervous around somebody, that's the, I guess if I'm around every day is my teacher, I guess. I don't know why I'm bringing that up. It just made me think of it right away. It was, it was very embarrassing. I don't like it. But you go, why is it always dinner? You pick your teeth. You pick your teeth. I'll wipe my chin. We'll find out what we're really about here. He's thinking, boy, nice hair. She's thinking, I can't believe the size of the piece of bread he just put in his mouth. <laughs> that always happens to me. Hmm. <laughs> That's funny. I guess it's not as funny if, if it's the other way around. It's just like, oh, 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 okay. Really? <laughs> hmm. This is weird. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't, this is why I have no friends. This is why I don't interact with the world. There's something weird about my brain. Reach for the reach for the bread. I suddenly forgot I'm on a date. I have this split second mental lapse and think I'm alone in a hotel room in Milwaukee and there's nothing you can do once that bread is in in there. You just get it down and hope she likes your car. I don't care about cars. What would what? Uh oh no! <laughs> I'm done. It's over for me. Oh, it's, 
Well, you know what? Maybe I'll grace. There'll be grace on me because I have grace towards that. I don't, I don't know how to drive. Oh, no. This turned into a horrible thing. I don't know what's happening. I shouldn't even hit record. I know. Is that why I have problems? Oh, no. What, what would the world be like if people... I hope this isn't true. Nah. Just forget I said anything. I was trying to be cute. What What would the world be like if people said whatever they were thinking all the time? Whenever it came to, Whenever it came to them, how long would a blind date last? About 13 seconds, I I think. Oh sorry, your re your rear end is too big. That's okay. Your breath stinks anyway. See you later. No problem. Goodbye. Okay. Thank you very much. Oh, that's terrible. I've never treated people like that. <laughs> dating in modern times is actually... Dating in modern times is actually a big improvement. Oh. <laughs> I'm getting totally depressed. <laughs> Why did it forget? It's fine. Everything's fine. Dating in modern times is actually a big improvement on past civilizations. You know that in ancient tri tribal cultures, they would sacrifice a virgin. This is true. They thought that would accomplish something. They would find some girl that had never been out with anybody and they would throw her into a volcano. <laughs> Now there's a first date she'll never forget. She winds up in heaven talking with Chuck <laughs> Woolery. So tell me, Lisa, how did the date end? Not well, Chuck, not well. Well, if you fall <laughs> into a volcano. Well, if you'd like to be thrown in... Well, if you'd like to be thrown into a volcano again, we'll pay for it. The worst dates are often the result of a fix-up. Why do we fix people up? Because you think they'll have a good time? Who the hell are you? It's a little power trip, isn't it? You're playing God. Of course, of, of course God was the first person to fix people up. Fixed up Adam and Eve, you know. I'm sure he said to Adam, No, no, she's nice. She's very free about her body. <laughs> Doesn't really wear much. She was going out with a snake, I think. I think that's over, though. <laughs> to me, the fix-up just what doesn't work. You cannot fix people up. It doesn't work because nobody wants to think that they need to be fixed up. You cannot get that out of your mind. It affects your attitude. <laughs> when you meet the person that you're fixed up with, <laughs> you go, Well, I guess everybody thinks I should be with you. I was fixed up with one time. I couldn't deal with it. The whole time we were out, I... <laughs> <laughs> You're just looking at every little thing go, I think I would like this. <laughs> what do they say? <laughs> well, maybe you do, though. Sometimes, I, sometimes people are right. I can say... <laughs> the whole time we were out, I could feel the puppet strings of the fixer-uppers on me. I couldn't even operate my body. I go to put my arms around her. <laughs> Slap. Sorry, I can't. <laughs> Slap. Sorry, I can't control my arms. This whole evening wasn't my idea. I'm just a puppet. <laughs> anyway, has it ever occurred to you that the, <laughs> ventrilo <laughs> the ventriloquist dummy always seems to have a very active sexual... <laughs> <The ven> ventriloquist... <laughs> sexual, active sexual social life? No, I don't know. <laughs> He's always talking about dates and women that he knows, and I don't like, I don't like puppets. <laughs> I don't like dummies. I don't like when you. Do, do, do. And I don't like that. I probably can. I probably need it uh, psychologically, but I, I don't. I don't like that. I mean, it's cute. It's fine. It's cute. Um, 
um, sorry, I don't I'm getting, I'm getting, because <laughs> whenever I say so, I don't like, I, I'm, I don't like, I'm not in, you know, I guess I like the Muppets and stuff, I like Muppets, the Muppets are cute, they're fun, I don't know why I'm even interjecting what I think I'm thinking about, uh, there's always, <laughs> There's always, they always have a very active sexual social life. He's always talking about dates and women that he knows and bringing them back to the suitcase at night. There's always a sawdust joke in there somewhere. Kinky sexual references to being made out of wood or spinning his head around. They're somehow expected to accept this, I guess, because the face is so animated. They think that we're not noticing, for example, that the feet are just kind of swinging there. I'm getting creeped out. Dummy feet never look r really right, <laughs> do they? Plastic shoes. <laughs> Plastic shoes just kind of dang dangling. Just kind of dangling there. Always kind of askew. You always just <laughs> see a little ankle and those little thin white fabric ankles that they have. And the thought creeps in. You know, I think they're trying to put something over on me here. Okay. <laughs> you know, I always ask to be a puppet. God, I would. Well, God made me a fancy puppet. <laughs> he was not. <laughs> he was the little plastic shoes dangling there. I've always wanted to invite a woman up to my apartment. <laughs> I always wanted to invite a woman up to my apartment for a nightcap and then just give her one of those little hats that flop <laughs> flops over on the side. And that's all. That's all. I just want. <laughs> that's all. I just wanted to give you that. You could go now. If you want to go out next week, I'll give you a short robe that matches. <laughs> that's funny, but it's terrifying. What? <laughs> Now, if you do spend the night at somebody else's house, which happen, which happens, it could happen. It's happened to a lot of people. You always think to yourself, I could handle this. It's no big deal. But your, <laughs> but your hair the next morning is the true reflection of how you really feel inside. Your hair freaks out when it wakes up at somebody else's house. You go to the bathroom and it's like, this is not our sink this is not our brush this is not our mirror uh, you have to keep don't worry about my hair it looks terrible hair powder freaks out when it wakes up in somebody else's house you're about this is my house this is my house this is my room it's not my house, my mom's house. It's my mom's house. Hello, I'm George. Hi, I'm George Costanza. I have no, I have no, what? No prospects, no money, no job. And I live with my parents. I'm sure. Hi. Come on. You have them, you have them? You know, but I already, I think I do say that already. So maybe I met, I have to be like the op. I gotta go into the opposite mode. Because I already am, I'm too honest like that. I guess I need to go, I need to start saying the fancy stuff. I need to just start saying ran, like, not be on. <laughs> I need to talk myself up then. Do the opposite. This is really awkward. I'm happy that it's making me laugh so much. You have to keep it from panicking. Would you would you just calm down? We'll be home in a minute. What can you do in the end of at the end of a date when you know you don't want to see this person ever again for the rest of your life 
What do you say? No matter what you say is a lie. I'll see you around. See you around? Where is <laughs> Where is that? If you're around and I'm around, I'll see you around that area. You'll be around other people, though. You won't be around me, but you will be around. Take care now. Did you ever say it? <laughs> Never say that to somebody. Take care now. Take care now because I'm not going to be taking care of you. <laughs> so you should take care of yourself now. Oh no. <laughs> Nobody thinks that really, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, everybody has their people that they really click with, but it ain't really, <laughs> you know, you're not going to stink that. <laughs> you wouldn't think that about me, but it's funny, though. See, I'm one of those annoying people now, because I, I get too, like, I'm sensitive, so now I, I always look at everything, like, through sensitive eyes, which is the most annoying person. <laughs> take off isn't that isn't that what you really want to say take off now get out of here the sex the problem with the sex orientation process is that every person has their own sexual timetable of what should happen when the other person of course knows nothing about it and no one's talking <laughs> i always talk <laughs> We all have this demeanor like that poster of W.C. Fields in the poker game. That's why I think we need some sort of sexual rule book where it's written down and are agreed upon. A sexual standard dating procedure. If there are any problems, you simply refer to it and go, Look, honey, I am very sorry, but we've been out three times, and according to Article 7, Section 5, there's got to be some physical contact. As you can see right, right there... Otherwise, I will report you to the whole board and they can put you out, put out a warrant for an embrace. <sighs> and a woman could go, first of all, if you think meeting me for half an hour on lunch break for a small yogurt and, and no topping is going to hold up as a date in front of that board, you can forget it. Not to mention calling me honey before the end of <laughs> three week en endearment. <laughs> you listen, you listen. Should I, should I not say honey? Should I not say I want to do stuff? Seems to me the ba the basic conflict between men and women is sex sexually is that men are like firemen to us. Sex is an emergen an emergency, and no matter what we're doing, we we can be ready in two minutes. Women, on the other hand, are like fire they're they're very exciting but the conditions have to be exactly right for it to occur men and women all in all have behaved just like our basic sexual <coughs> elements if you watch single men on a weekend night they really act very much like sperm all disorganized bumping into their friends swimming in the wrong direction i was first let i was first let me through i've never seen this this has never happened around me ever None of this ever happened to me. Or never, and none of the men around me are like this. It's all not, it's none of this is real. I don't know who these people are. They, none of the men are, I, and my family are like that. None of the fam, none of the people I've met outside, none of them are like this. I don't know who these people are. Maybe you guys think, maybe. <laughs> What about talk? What about talking during sex? The question is: Does the talking really improve the sex, or is the sex act there now just to spice up the conversation? Of course, eventually, I'm sure people will get tired of or too lazy, or even for phone sex, they'll start having phone machine sex. They'll be really bored. Yeah, I want I want you really bad. Just leave it on the tape. Then I guess the phone company will come out with sex with sex waiting. They'll be that'll be the new thing. Uh yeah, hold on, honey. It's the other line. Oh hiya, baby. One second. Uh honey, I've gotta take this. 
Yeah, I've got a sex waiting on the other line. I've got to take this call. <laughs> See, each man and each woman actually does have an owner's manual. Nothing's written down anywhere. But the directions for operation of an individual in a relationship are detailed and specific, nonetheless. So when you start out with someone, you're essentially driving a strange car for the first time, and none of the controls are labeled. So the wipers can come on at strange times. Sometimes you stall. On top of that, we've all met people with bad steering, no brakes, needs a muffler, headlights a little dim, too much in the trunk, not enough under the hood. I'm sorry, I to the last two, the last page, I've totally been zoned out. I don't even know what you're talking about anymore. Well, I'm. Okay. I told. Whoa! I didn't. I was just read. Oh, I was not even there. What? What? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I just freaked myself out so bad. I was like, I thought I was totally brain problems. I think I just skipped a page. I was like, oh my gosh, did my brain, am I that crazy? Sorry, I'm starting to freak myself out being like going back and forth with the gender thing. I'm so <laughs> women approach clothes from a different angle altogether. The other day I was watching women in a department store looking at clothes and I noticed women don't try on the clothes, they get behind the clothes. They take a dress off the rack and they hold it up against themselves and they can tell something from this. They stick one leg out and kind of lean back. <laughs> kind of lean back. And I guess they need... <laughs> I guess they need to know if somebody someday I'm one <laughs> I'm one legged at a forty five degree angle. What am I do what am I going to wear? I'm I you never see a man do that. You never see a guy take a suit off the rack and put his head behind the collar and go, What do you think about this suit? I think I'll get it. Put some shoes by the bottom of the pants. I want to make sure <laughs> to make sure now <laughs> now what if i'm wa now what if i'm walking move the sh <laughs> move the shoes move the sh <laughs> move the shoes move the shoes i'm <laughs> that's funny anyway this is nice taking <laughs> it makes my brain stop a little bit I guess it's look at even this is making it go though. Look at see how I'm freaking out in between everything. <laughs> Once I try <laughs> <laughs> so weird, scary. Once I tried one of these relaxation float tanks. It's this big tank and you get in it about 500 pounds of salt dissolved in water so you float. Now I've found the best thing to do with one of these things is to get in there with a bunch of paper cuts and some razor burn. And by the time they let you out, 
Your body will have taken the shape of the inside of the container, and you won't need a relaxation tank because you'll actually be one. What? Of course everyone wants to be healthy. That The amusing thing is no one really sure how to do it. I love to exercise, but I still have to laugh at it. You, ha you go to the health club, you see all these people, and they're working out, and they're training, and they're getting in shape, but nobody's really getting in shape for anything. In modern society, you really don't have to be physically strong to do anything. The only reason that you're getting in shape is so you can get through the workout. <laughs> so we're working out so that will be in shape for when we have to do our exercises. <laughs> That's comedy. <laughs> the one the other thing I don't get about working out is why we're so careful about locking up our f dirty towels, our filthy shorts, and smelly jock straps. You know, you could sell those, they're worth a lot. Oh, man. What exactly is the black market value on these disgusting items? I give my car to any guy in front of a restaurant because he's got a short red jacket. <laughs> I guess he's the valet guy. I don't even think about it. But for my hideous putrefied gym shorts, I got one of these locks. You can put a bullet through it. <laughs> it <won't open>. <laughs> that <laughs> stuff is safe. Funny. So we all think we're experts on our own bodies. I was in the drugstore the other day trying to get cold medication. Did you ever try to pick out one of these? Pick one of these out? Not easy. There's an entire wall of products that you need. You stand there going, well, this one is quick acting, acting but this one is long lasting. Which one is more important, the present or the future? They're all, it's always max strength. It, just make one. I don't understand. There's a, there's a, everybody just wants. Especially if you have a collagen, everybody wants something that will last long and is this and as strong as you get, right? Why you don't sit there? I don't sit there. If I have a cold, I don't want something that's gonna be all weak and stupid. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe maybe some people don't want that. Actually. So I don't try and get tooth teeth whitening stuff. And it's a million different things. A million different words for the whitening of the teeth. And there was just all these different th and all these different things. And I'm like, I, I'm getting so confused. Don't we? We all just want our teeth to be white as they could be and strong as they could be. That's it. They just try to confuse you with all these weird things. That's everybody just the, whatever it is, just make it the strongest and the best. Everything. Don't, don't. Are we 
scared spider. Women definitely go to. <laughs> I said, what do you mean? It was one's pain. One is another thing crawling up on you. I was just thinking the other day. What if? What if I um, was? What if you were a spider? What if I'm a spider? I'm scared. How sad. And everybody's scared of you. And you're... That would be sad. Here's him. He's wearing a suit. Oh, he's dishevelly. That's cute. <laughs> Let's face it. The human body is like a condominium apartment. The thing that keeps you from really enjoying it is the maintenance there's a tremendous amount of daily weekly monthly yearly work that has to be done from showering to open heart surgery we're always doing something to ourselves <laughs> if your body was a used car you you wouldn't buy it you'd go nah i've, I've heard about these these human being bodies this is one of those earth models right yeah a cousin of mine had one too much work to keep them going the new ones are nice looking, though. No, I'm running out of space. I got a lot. I'm my. I feel. I have such huge memory cards that I just think that it, it'll last forever. But I actually think this one's going low again. This is like 400 gigs. And so last minute, it's only had it like a month and a half, two months. Wait, we'll, we'll read like a few more. Let's we'll around for. Fear of success is one of the new fears I've heard about lately. And I think it's definitely a sign that we're running out of fears. <sighs> a person suffering from fear of success is scraping the bottom of the fear barrel. Are we going to need AA type meetings for these people? They get out to the microphone and go, Hi, my name is Bill and I can't stand the thought of having a stereo and cream colored couch. <laughs> According to the most studies, people's number one fear is public speaking. Number two is death. Death is number two. Does that seem right? That means to the average person, if you have to go to a funeral, you're better off in the casket than doing the eulogy. Oh, I'm so ugly. I'm not paying attention. <laughs> eulogy. suicide person is the people who try to commit suicide for some reason they, they don't die and that's it they stop trying they don't why don't they just keep trying what's changed is their life any better now no in fact it's worse because now they've found out that they're that here's one more thing that you stink at and that's why these people don't succeed at life and to begin with, they give up too easy. I say pills don't work. Try a rope. Car won't start in the garage. Get a tune-up. There's nothing more rewarding than reaching a goal you set for yourself. That's funny. I mean... <laughs> Alright. Don't give up.
On planes is very tiny. There's always tiny food, tiny liquor bottles, tiny pillows, tiny bathroom, tiny sink, tiny soap. Everything. Everyone's in a cramped seat working on a tiny computer. There's always a small problem. There, there'll be a slight delay. We'll be a big late if you can. Bit a bit late if you can. Be a little patient. We're just trying to get one of those little trucks to pull us up a little closer to the jetway. So. You can walk down the narrow hallway. There'll be a man there in a, t in a tight little jacket, and he'll tell you that you have very little time to make your connecting flight, so move it. Tiny stuff. <laughs> That's cute. I like tiny little jacket. Tiny little... <sighs> question about women's gymnastics is simple. Are we not supposed to be looking at their little rear ends? <laughs> little rear ends. While they're jumping around all over the place. <laughs> because I think that... I think that's pretty much all we've been doing. And I don't know if it's wrong. I mean, if it's wrong, I'll stop. But no one's ever said anything about it. And the announcer never goes... In judging this event, they'll throw out the high score, the low score, and stop staring at their little rear ends. <laughs> they really do have the most unbelievable rear ends in the world, and it's hard not to notice it. Whenever they talk about what this girl needs to do to win, I'm thinking, win? Win what? I think we have a winner right here. You know how race car drivers and tennis players get paid to have a company name sewn on their uniform? Can you imagine how much money these women gymnasts could make if they sold advertising in the right spot on that little leotard? All it would have to say is, diet slice on the cheek and she's set for life in the greatest ad space 
ever. We guarantee people will see your message. Your product will be a household name in the qualifying round. <laughs> I feel like everybody has amazing butts these days. Well, I'm so ugly. Ew. I'm not paying attention. Everybody has an amazing butt these days. Like, everybody... I... I used to have a butt that was, like, big. Like, in the... Con not... You know what? Not really, actually. It was a little bit bigger than the... No, it wasn't. Maybe it wasn't. I don't know. Like, but then it... But, and so, I don't know. I used to get compliments on it. But then now, everybody's ass is amazing. And I have the ugliest ass ever. Ever. So, I don't know. It's really sad. It's so sad. And then back, back then, it was like I should have to cover it up. Like, oh, you should, your butt looks too big in this. But then I look at it, I go, oh, these beautiful, big, firm, juicy butts. And I'm like, I now I don't even look good anymore. Now I missed my hole. I missed my shot. I missed my glory days. Of lit of now it's just nothing. It's not good or bad. I mean, it's not juicy and it's not tiny. I'm just shit. And that's why I'm sitting here. I'm sad and my head's spinning. Is there any comment? Are there? There are many cosmetic surgery procedures available to people today. Liposuction, for instance, are you from? Yes, I need that too. Liposuction, for instance, are you familiar with this? It's a fat sucking machine. <laughs> it's a fat. <laughs> it's a fat sucking machine. This is a fun. <laughs> Just to say it's so matter of fact. It's a fat sucking machine. Now you know that somewhere, somewhere, somebody is working on a way to make this available in a restaurant. <laughs> So you can just order it off the menu. And I'll tell you what. Give me the cheesecake. Crank me up to nine. <laughs> and put a scoop of ice cream on the side. That's one of the most popular procedures today is the nose job. The technical term for the nose job is rhino rhinoplasty. Rhino? I mean, do we really need to insult the person at this particular moment of their life? They know they have a big nose, and that's why they're coming in. Do they really need to the abuse of being compared to a rhinoceros? 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 A rhin rhinoceros? On top of everything else, why is so when someone goes in for their hair transplant, they don't say, We're going to perform a cue ballectomy on you, Mr. Johnson. We're going to attempt to remove the skin head of your chrome doma so that. These are, are the technical terms, of course. While I haven't had any cosmetic surgery, does having teeth pulled count? What about shaving? It's cosmetic. There's blood. I do have regular physical examination, giving them that urine sample. That's always a pleasure, isn't it? There's always the amount of amount question. I don't know what you need. I mean, I gave you whatever I had there. I've got more. I mean, whatever you need, I can get it for you. Just let me know what's necessary. I'm sure everything... Eventually, it can meet the requirement. <laughs> I was about to say, I don't. I never tried anything in school. Like I never tried hard. But with this, <laughs> when I saw, I was gonna say I don't relate, but. <laughs> If it was any physical test, I don't know what it is. I always seem to get competitive. Remember when you were in school and they do those hearing <laughs> tests? And you'd really be listening hard, you know? I wanted to do unbelievable on the hearing test. <laughs> and that's the only thing I remember. I remember. I was like, oh, I, I want to I wanna show. I'm going to show them I'm really good at this. That's like one of the only things that I ever felt that way about. That was funny. I forgot all about that stuff. Wanted them to come over to me at, after and go, <laughs> after and go. We think you may have something, have something close to super hearing. <laughs> what you heard was a cotton, <laughs> cotton ball touching a piece of felt. <laughs> 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 
We're sending the results to Washington. <laughs> We'd like you to meet the president. <laughs> That's funny. I'm ending on that one. That's hilarious. <laughs> you super hearing you need to meet the president that's funny Well, I guess I'll end. I don't want to read it all because it's actually. Thanks, Jerry. you getting me out of my head spins. There he is. That was funny. We'll pick it up again next time. I want it out of my psychosis. Love you, I love you. Goodbye. Not goodbye, I don't like goodbyes. Uh, uh, I'll be here. I'll be here. I'm here. I love you.